I'm Mike Smith, and I'm president of the Homeschool Legal Defense Association here in Percival, Virginia. Perfect. Um, and then if you could introduce to us HSLDA, what, in a nutshell, what is HSLDA? Yes, Homeschool Legal Defense Association is, uh, we're in our 35th year now. And when we started, we had the same purpose then we have now. That's to advance and protect the freedom of families to be able to homeschool, to make homeschooling possible. What does HSLDA do for families? How does it benefit homeschool families? Well, first of all, we're a membership association. We have over 80,000 families. So the fact that we have 80,000 families that have basically like-minded, they want to homeschool their children. The purpose of HSLDA is to make it possible for them to do that. First of all, legally, and we've been working on that for a long time. And we're happy to say that with the help of a lot of other peoples and the Lord, a lot of other people and the Lord, uh, homeschooling is legal in every state in some form or fashion. Some states are certainly more regulatory than others, others but uh, you can homeschool, and generally speaking, you don't have to be a college graduate to do it. And generally speaking, there are very few regulations. There are exceptions. So HSLDA basically is an association of homeschool families advancing freedom. Uh, but we also offer um, benefits uh, a lot of benefits, but our ma basic benefit that a lot of people like are our consultants. We have folks that will consult and help educationally for all the grades and for special needs students. How have you seen homeschooling change over the past 30 plus years? Well, the biggest change is the fact that it's legal now. So when my wife and I started homeschooling in California in 1981, uh, I didn't have any idea that homeschooling would not be something that the government would love because of the, the benefit to families. But I found out pretty quickly that homeschooling in California was not legal for our family because the California Department of Education was of the opinion that you had to be a certified teacher to be able to teach your children at home. In other words, there was only one exemption from public school attendance that would qualify, they said, and that would be the tutorial exemption. So. We found out fairly early this was going to be exciting and interesting because as a lawyer, which I am, uh, I take an oath to uphold the constitutions of California and the U.S. and abide by the laws of the state of California. So now all of a sudden I'm thinking, wait a minute, uh, they're saying that I'm not legal. So that began an interesting journey in California and, and where we are today, and that is making every state legal for parents to be able to teach their children at home. So what has changed drastically is that. Probably the second thing has changed um, as drastically are the numbers, of course. When we started early on in the 80s, there were very few homeschool families. Today, you know, there are probably a million homeschool families. There are probably over two million children that are homeschooled. That makes up about 4% of the school age population and growing every year. Thirdly, I would think just the way that, that moms teach their children at home uh, has changed quite a bit. So when my wife started, there were no co-ops. Uh, as a matter of fact, Bob Jones would not even sell curriculum to homeschool families. It was hard to get curriculum. It was hard to get support. There are very few support groups. So you basically were alone in doing this. So that's a big change, and that, that obviously is a positive change. So I think those are the three biggest changes that I've seen. I'm so grateful that you all paved the way for us <laughs> to do what we do today. Um, what, what new things is HSLDA doing to help correct, uh, not correct, protect parental rights? Well, we have a sister organization called parentalrights.org, and we're trying to introduce, and we'll introduce shortly, a parental rights amendment to protect parents' right to direct the upbringing and education of their children if we can get it through Congress and then get it through the states, which will be a challenge, but that's our goal and objective. Now, while we're doing that, we're actually getting resolutions passed in various states recognize parental rights uh, to direct the upbringing and education of children. I wanna to touch just for a second on charter schools. Charter schools are a choice in education, and obviously HSLDA is for choice. So. Uh, let, let's just talk about the, the areas of choice. One can choose public schools, that's free. Every parent has a right to send a child to a public school. Then we have private schools. Parents can choose private schools. Those tend to be costly. It can cost you to send your children there. Then we have homeschooling, which is fairly inexpensive, but 
a lot of sacrifice involved because mom or dad has to do it primarily. And then what we have found recently popping up are what we call charter schools or in California, they're called virtual charter schools, but they're everywhere now. And this is what some of us call public school at home. Uh, parents can teach their children, but their children are actually enrolled in public education and they receive funding from the government. So once you get involved in funding from the government, you're talking about regulation. Now, do you have more freedom than if your children are enrolled in a public school? Yes. So I would say that versus public school enrollment for parents, yes, charter schools are better, but in our opinion, ultimately those are not in the best interest of homeschooling long-term because you're gonna have the government eventually try to regulate everything we do. Now that could spill over into private homeschooling as well. That's our concern about charter schools, virtual charter schools, um, all other kinds of choice involving parents where they get money to teach their kids at home. Uh, we'll just see where that goes. Obviously, uh, a lot of the politicians are very much interested in choice for all parents, including funding all education, because they say, well, ultimately, unless parents can get some help financially, a lot of them are not going to be able to do it, even homeschool. Uh, so, I mean, that's the argument. Our argument is, well, um, for 20 years or so, parents were doing homeschooling and they didn't have public funding. And actually, it, you can make a way to do it. It's just a matter of necessity. When you have necessity, you figure out a way to make it work. And it's quite frankly, it's in the best interest of families and children if you do that, rather than relying on the government, which what we're finding also now with the virtual charter schools is the kids that are in those schools are not learning a lot. Isn't this sad? Because what's happening there, a lot of these kids are being placed in front of a computer. So when you do that, you lose the, the genius of a home education, which is mom and dad coming alongside and working in conjunction with the child and te actually teaching the child, tutoring the child, instructing the child. So in several states, and uh, for, for instance, the state of Idaho, the virtual charter school students are required to take the same testing, year in testing, quarterly testing, et cetera, that public school kids are testing, and they're testing below the public school students. So this is not a good trend. It doesn't seem to be able to be actually that good for kids even, these virtual charter schools. Well, talking about Betsy DeVos, who's now the Secretary of Education, obviously this is a positive move for just choice in education because she's not really, in my opinion, a public school advocate. She certainly is for all kinds of choices, including public school. But she's more of an advocate, and this is driving the public school people crazy, for choice in education. And we've talked to her about that personally. And we've indicated to her that, that we understand her concerns and we are for choice in education. The ultimate choice is homeschooling and that we would like for the government to stay out of homeschooling. And she heard us, so we'll see where that ends up. And we explained to her why, and I think she understands uh, the negatives of having government get involved in education because she's trying to actually eliminate a lot of the regulation as it relates to public education even now. What do you see for the future of homeschooling families? Well, I hope the future of homeschooling families is more families homeschooling. That's what I hope. So I think that I would like to see our state organizations remain strong, and that's the challenge right now. Um, the young folks that are coming in, the millennial folks that are coming into homeschooling, it seems that they don't see the need so much to be involved with a state organization, maybe even a local support group. A lot of stuff is being done online, obviously, and through Facebook and social media, et cetera. And I don't necessarily think that's a good trend, but that's what it is. That's what we have right now. And quite frankly, the options out there and the resources that are available are almost unlimited right now. Uh, if you have any question you want regarding homeschooling, you can go online and get it answered. That's a good thing. I think that's great. But on the other hand, we just have to remember, this is still about children and parents working together to make this work. Uh, it's not, and do I like co-ops? Sure, I like the opportunity, but co-ops can become a private school if we're not careful. Mom can end up with maybe two classes a week to three or four, and Again, that's not in the homes that's not homeschooling in the traditional sense that I'm familiar with. 
And so HSLDA, really what we would like to do through our foundation and through just our consultants is to help families be able to do this on their own, to give them the kind of advice and resources that they need. And actually financially also, the Homeschool Foundation is, a, is the charitable arm of HSLDA. It's helping homeschoolers that are struggling through hard times. And so what we're doing through that is families that can't afford to homeschool, we're helping them. We buy curriculum for them and that sort of thing. So that's really where I hope the future is, is more private help rather than public and less involvement in handing our children off to other people to educate. It wasn't really until I started talking with her about homeschooling and really understanding how hard you all fought years ago to pave the road for us to have the freedom. Yeah. And, and you know, younger parents like us who have young kids who were just getting into homeschooling, we, we've not put a lot of thought into that. You know, we, we just kind of have taken for granted, well, of course homeschooling is legal. Why wouldn't it be? Right. And, right. Um, and so it's been very eye-opening filming this documentary and, and really understanding it wasn't always like this. It was such a different culture back then. And, you know, it wasn't legal in many states. And um, so we're very thankful for HSLDA well, thank you. and, and I, what you've done. You're work. very welcome. I, so. I appreciate that. It's been a privilege, really, to be a part of this whole thing and see it change like it has. Yeah. The, the homeschool community is, is so different. Really, in a lot of ways, like I mentioned, but this is the reason I have written this history now. I've got 10 chapters of it. And so what we're going to do in two weeks, we're going to once a week, we're going to send it to everybody in California and we're going to send it to everybody in the United States on our, we have 260,000 people on our email list. So we're going to send it out. And the reason I'm doing that is the very reason you just said, if, if you don't understand what it was before and what it took to get where we are today, we can lose this real quickly because there's not that commitment to freedom. And freedom is the key to homeschooling. This is the reason we stay away from the government. You can't have freedom and be taking money from the government. That's not freedom. Right. And freedom is the key to the success of homeschooling because you have to have the freedom within your home to teach every child differently. You have to have the freedom with your home to teach this curriculum and not this one. And if we don't have that freedom, homeschooling will go away and that's what we're fighting to keep from happening. My vision for HSLDA is 100,000 member families, and we're working on it, but our membership ha has been relatively flat the last several years. Uh, we're not growing right now, so we're looking at things that maybe uh, could appeal to folks to join HSLDA. The fear factor is not as great as it used to be. You know, 25 years ago, mom would say to dad, you better get that insurance for me because if a social worker shows up here, I want to have HSLD, I want to have some help. Well, that's, there's not so much fear in that now, which is a good thing. But on the other hand, we have to maintain this freedom. And every year in the legislatures, uh, various states are trying to roll back the freedom that homeschoolers have gained. And so HSLDA is constantly, vigilantly um, monitoring all of that and working to defeat bad bills and trying at the same time trying to continue to uh, toward a trend of more freedom. And we have states like Pennsylvania and New York where we're working. We haven't been very successful, but we continue to work. We're not going to give up to bring those states into line with states like Idaho and Texas and other states where there's a lot of freedom. Well, to be rather crude, um, when I go out to speak to homeschool audiences, I have two goals in mind. One is to pat mom on the back and say, you know, continue doing what you're doing. Don't give up, we know it's hard. Because I do believe that, that homeschool moms are, are America's greatest heroes. I know how much sacrifice it takes, and I know how important it is what they're doing. Not just for their children, but for their family, okay? So I wanna encourage moms, you're doing the right thing. And my wife did a survey of moms many years ago, and she asked several questions, and one of the questions she asked was, what's the greatest pressure you feel in homeschooling. The number one pressure was, I feel the sole responsibility for how my children turn out. Now that's a direct reflection on the husband and the father, correct? So the other side of the reason I go out is to kick the dads in the rear end and say, let's get going. And so I do a talk to fathers and, and basically what I say to them is your key role is to be the strong husband to your wife and a protector with the children for her. 
the number one violation in your home has to be disrespect of your wife. And it has to be enforced by you. Because we all know what happens after a while as kids get bigger, they challenge mom. And if dads don't step in, and if they don't be the enforcer and protect mom and ensure that there's discipline in that home, you can't homeschool. You have to have discipline to homeschool. So I try to encourage dads to be involved, to come home and ask, how was it today, honey? And talk to the kids to show interest, even if you don't teach a course, okay? Because most of us are not gonna do that. I didn't do it until I had to. <laughs> and so to be involved, ask, to show interest, how we doing kids? To give mom free time, to take the kids so that mom is insured some free time, to spend time with other adults. I don't think dads realize how difficult it is to spend all day long with children to try to talk children talk all day long without adult talk. We don't even understand. We go off. We talk to adults all day long. That in and of itself is a lot of pressure. So I really try to summarize it this way. Dads, you need to be the principal as it relates to homeschooling. You need to be the principal of your school. That means you need to know what's going on. You need to help in the selection of curriculum. You need to be the number one support of your wife. So you need to be the principal on the one hand. On the other hand, you need to be a strong husband for your wife. You need to be a loving husband. Love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Because, you know, if, if mom is involved in an unhappy marriage situation, it's going to reflect on the children. The number one reason that children rebel, according to uh, Lou Priolo, who wrote a book on this, The Heart of Anger, it's called. He wrote a book, and he, he basically did a study of a 1,000 families that had rebellious children. And what he found is the number one reason those children were rebelling is lousy marriages. The relationship between mom and dad was broken. It was lousy. And the children suffered as a result because of all of the bitterness between mom and dad. And the Bible says it. Don't let a root of bitterness spring up, defile you, and defile many. Those are the children. They get defiled because of it. So, number one, dads, <clears throat> be a strong husband. Be a good husband. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. And number two, be a principal of your homeschool program. Those are the two main points that I stress. Awesome. You have your model dad and husband right here. Good for that. <laughs> He's Good a great for him. One. I'm very blessed. I feel very strongly about the benefit of homeschooling, not necessarily educationally, which that is important, obviously, and that's the reason we do it, but for the family, to strengthen the family and spiritually to raise up godly children. And so I know how hard it is because my wife tried to quit homeschooling several times. And... She didn't because she's a Proverbs 32 wife. What is a Proverbs 32 wife or 32 woman? A Proverbs 32 wife. Do we know that the Proverbs 31 wife was quite a wife, but we know that she, at least it doesn't say that she homeschooled. So when you add all the requirements, responsibilities a mom has to homeschooling, you come up with a Proverbs 32 wife, but it's not easy. Proverbs 32 woman is tough when you homeschool. So here's what I would say. Uh, homeschooling is never going to be easy, but because it's not easy, the results and the product is tremendous if we just don't quit. And that's the main thing. We don't quit. And feeling that we're, we have to be adequate to do it is a mistake. And that's really a lie of the devil. Because the biggest reason, the main reason when we started homeschooling, we would talk to people and ask of uh, folks, why wouldn't you consider homeschooling? The response was, I'm not capable of doing it. I'm not capable. That's a lack of faith. Because the, que the answer is, yeah, they're not capable. Nobody is. But with the help of God and the assistance that's available today, anybody should be able to homeschool. And I just go back to one principle that's taught in the Bible that we need to remember when we feel like quitting, we feel inadequate, we feel like we can't do it, we're not capable. Uh, we remember in the book of Corinthians that the Apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh. He prayed three times for God to remove that from him. And I'm assuming that the reason he prayed and asked God to remove it was not just because 
it was some inconvenience or some pain to him. He felt that it was a detriment to his ministry because Paul was committed to ministry. That was his whole life. So what did God say to Paul? He said, no, I'm not going to do it because if I do it, basically you're not going to need me. You're not going to be dependent upon me. You're going to basically depend on yourself, and that's not where I want you to live. So what was Paul's response? He said, I'd rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of God might rest upon me, that when I'm weak, I'm strong. So let's just remember that when we're at our weakest moment, we have the potential to be at our strongest, because at that time in history, at that moment, if we will call on God to help us, we'll see the supernatural intervention of God in our lives that will propel us to success. So never quit, never give up, rely upon God. <music>